And y'all can on. laugh at me. It's fine. I will be your spectacle. I will be your laughing, laughing spectacle. You can all laugh at me. It's well, fine. Well, you know what? I think we're just going to shut this down because I'm not into all this melodrama and you playing the victim and everything. So th this has just gone in a really bad direction. I'm going to talk with your mother and I'm just going to let you head on home and go. What's up guys, boy Benny. An incredible thing is happening right now in America. There is a paradigm shift where people can no longer stay silent about the evil that they are seeing. There is actually so much evil that is starting to seep into our normal lives. It's starting to corrupt some of the nice places and nice things that we had in this country going for us, like a stable currency, like security on our streets, like a border that wasn't a crime scene wasn't an invasion point. Ladies and gentlemen, people are waking up. And I think that there's like this moment that really like snapped the brains of a lot of Americans. And that was COVID. Some people had their brain snapped in the wrong direction. Some people went actually absolutely, absolutely psychotic during COVID-19. And some people started to say, wait a second, like, do the people in charge actually care about me? The people that made the food pyramid, the people that sent our sons and daughters to war on a lie, do they actually care about us? The people that have poisoned our water and our food supply, the people that want us to live in the pod and eat the bugs, like do those people, like those, those, the elites, the people that are in charge, do they actually care about us at all? Maybe they don't. Wait a second, you're gonna lock kids out of school? You're gonna stop kids from learning? That that's your solution here? Um, that 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 doesn't seem right. You're gonna shut down the economy? All of it was bizarro world. And all of it was completely and totally designed to give more power to the goblins that actually created this crisis in the first place. And that made a lot of people awake, not enough as I thought, but it made enough people awake. And more and more, you're seeing clips all over social media to be like, wait a second, you wanted to stop us from where you want to take my job because I didn't get your experimental injection. And yet you're opening the border, that the borders open and anyone from anywhere disease is able to like come walking into the country without a single test of anything. Like that doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. Right. And so that's the point that that's the position that we are in right now. And that position is coming crashing down on some of the last little inner sanctums of corporate media where like there is no border crisis, where COVID-19 was like the most beautifully and effortlessly handled thing. Dr. Fauci is a hero. Joe Biden is incredibly intelligent. Like that world is now collapsing, okay? Dr. Phil, did you know he was based? Dr. Phil slams COVID-19 lockdowns. We're going to be paying a very high price for decades to come, he said. He said this on The View. Dr. Phil rattles The View hosts with rant against COVID-19 closures. The View hosts, of course, are extremely low information, extremely low vibration individuals who squawk out the talking points that they've been given by the super state. They don't know or believe or know anything, but they've been handed talking points that Dr. Fauci is a hero and that everything that Joe Biden did saved lives. Dr. Phil came in to uh, take a massive piss in their punch bowl, uh, pluck the feathers of these hens um, and have himself a fried chicken dinner. Whoo, delicious watch. 0809 smartphones came on and and kids started they stopped living their lives and started watching people live their lives mm. and so we saw the biggest spike and the highest levels of depression anxiety loneliness and suicidality since records have ever been kept mm. and it's just continued on and on and on and then COVID hits 10 years later and the same agencies that knew that are the agencies that shut down the schools for two years. Who does that? Who takes away the support system for these children? Who takes them away and shuts it down? And by the way, when they shut it down, they stopped the mandated reporters from being able to see children that were being abused and sexually molested, and in fact sent them home and abandoned them to their abusers with no way to watch, and referrals dropped 50 to 60 percent. So, there was also a yeah. pandemic yeah, going was, on, they were trying to save kids' lives. They were trying lives, to save so kids' well. lives. Remember, we know a lot of folks who died during this. So the, it wasn't, people weren't laying uh, around eating bond, but, well, you know what? We're lucky. Maybe we're lucky they didn't, because we kept them out of the, the 
the places that they could get, be sick because no one wanted to believe we had an issue. Are you saying no school children died of COVID? I'm saying it was the safest group. They were the less vulnerable group and they suffered and will suffer more from the mismanagement of COVID than they will from the exposure to COVID. And that's not an opinion, that's a fact. Well, Phil? Oh man, okay. And then what do they do? They immediately cut to commercial break. Quick, quick, cut to commercial break. Panic, oh crap, I gotta go. (laughs) You heard the, the music? Play him out, play him out. He's about to say something about Biden and Fauci. Quick. Too much truth. Let's look, let's read a quote here. The children are the least vulnerable vulnerable group. That's a fact. And they suffered and will suffer more from the mismanagement of COVID than they will from the exposure to COVID. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. Scream and cut to commercial is what happened on The View when you state those facts. Ooh, man, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. That's just a total and complete brutality for the people who are there to control the narrative, that is what The View's job is to do, to the low information, typically suburban women that are just watching at home to effectively manufacture uh, the gray matter, the sludge that is the corporate media narrative that you are not allowed to question. And it's not the only time that Dr. Phil has said these kind of things about COVID-19. Check out this clip at the height of COVID from Dr. Phil, totally based. 250 people a year die from poverty. And the poverty line is getting such that more and more people are going to fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus. I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying. 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools. But we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this. And the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed and you're not allowed to say these things especially on the view that is why he rattles the cages but dr phil is out here rattling away good for him man like good for him on his own show dr phil hosts some of the more interesting and intriguing debates of our time especially over race relations this one really got us he's talking about poverty there dr phil having a debate about black America, blacks in America, and where do the problems actually come from inside of that community? Man, talk about a black pill on this show, watch. The sector that you will find, there were about 3,700 free blacks who owned 12,000 slaves, black slaves. The question is, do the descendants of those free blacks who owned black slaves, do they pay? Blacks really, uh, benefited more the first hundred years after slavery we have in the last 50 years. I was born in 1937 during the Depression. Everyone in my small, low-income black community, 98% of the households had a man and a woman raising children. Elderly people could walk safely in that community without fear of being assaulted by their grandchildren. Never heard a gunfire during that time. Never heard of a child being Uh, shot to death in the crib. But there are 50 children today who have been shot and killed in our cities. If you're you're talking about remedies, we've got to look beyond uh, saying that that every solution has to have a, a, a winner and a loser, that blacks can only benefit if whites lose. We have to be defined more than just victims of oppression. If you are platforming that viewpoint, this uh, man is obviously a scholar and somebody who's uh, appeared on Tucker Carlson's show uh, regularly to speak about racial issues. This man has done his homework and obviously lived this experience um, and has the data to back it all up. They're lying. They have eroded, degraded, and destroyed that community, and they continue to do so. Go check in on the south side of Chicago, the Bronx. Go check in on the black neighborhoods of Philadelphia or Milwaukee or Detroit or Los Angeles, and ask them what they think about the criminal alien invasion. Go do it. We're going to go do it on our show. Ask them what they think about it. Who, baby, hot damn, will you hear some answers on that? Dr. Phil, based on the border, Dr. Phil's gone down to the border and has obviously seen with his own eyes 
what is going on there. Dr. Phil has regularly gone on TV to talk about the border issue, something that, of course, you're not allowed to do if you're a celebrity. But talking about the open invasion of our country, Dr. Phil saying that the Chinese criminal aliens entering the U.S. across the border are spies. So unbelievably based. Look at Dr. Phil. Good for him, man. Dr. Phil is speaking truth, though, on Sean Hannity's show. Watch. Why do you think they're coming to our southern border? And what are the odds that there are terror cells among that, that large group of people? We would be incredibly narcissistic to assume that these people are coming in here just because they're in the neighborhood. They're coming in here with an agenda, Sean. Between 2010 and 2020, it's estimated that 1,100 Chinese came across the southern border. In the first 11 months of 23, it's estimated that 33,000 came across, and many of them military-age men. Now, where did they go once they came across the border? We have no idea. They're not being monitored. They're not being followed. And look, in China, you don't just decide, you know what, I think I'll take a trip. They have to go through certain steps to get out of China. It costs a lot of money to get here. And when they get here, what are they doing? Uh, if they're working in farming, if they're working in industry, I'll promise you they are expected to do certain things. Are they spying? Are they sending uh, seeds back from farming to China? Are they getting plans from uh, industries they're working on? But without question, whether it's you know COVID, uh, whether it's the responses to COVID, whether it's Dr. Phil on race relations or on the migrant crisis, there's nothing, nothing that tops this clip from Bill Maher. Dr. Phil talking about the system in America and looking beyond the human beings who are sort of the meat puppets for the system, but talking about the greater overall corruption of the system and the corruption of culture. And this is really getting to the heart of the issue. Dr. Phil uh, saying this on Bill Maher's little weed smoking show, degenerate show in his basement, super creepy. I don't really like the way the show's shot or done. But Bill Maher melts down when Dr. Phil says, I don't share your TDS. I don't share your Trent Ferenger syndrome. Uh, protect Dr. Phil at all costs. Can't believe I ever said that, but good on this man. Way to go, man. Like way to use your celebrity and your voice for power, like, and for actually helping America. All these other people, they're such frauds. As Elon Musk says, they try and play like they're doing good and then they do evil. This is Dr. Phil actually doing good. Watch. Uh, Trump, you got to like be on the page that he's worse than Joe look, Biden look, and very different than Joe Biden. Come on, Doc. Look, it's, not the, it's not politics that determine the outcome of society. It's culture. I don't care about politics. You go back to the beginning and Democrat and Republicans have been in control about 50-50. They've had control of the House and Senate while they were in control of the presidency about 50-50. They've had it not in control 50-50. And, and look where we are. They both come up about the same place. I don't but care about that. I care about our culture. Okay. I'm disappointed that I can't get you to just out and out say that Trump is a completely different animal than the politics on the left and the right that we both agree is very uh, lacking on both sides. It begs but the question. He is a completely different element and much more dangerous. I mean, we're, we're talking about some sort of unnatural predator that was introduced into this wild, which was not a, it was a jungle in the first place. But this is a different element. This is, nobody else has ever tried to not uh, concede an election in this country try to overturn an election we all, even the people in his own party, understood was lost. That is a Rubicon that we have crossed that makes him completely unique. A unicorn, if a unicorn was a big fat asshole. You, if I, if I can't have your faith on that, I, 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 it's very hard for me to understand where you're coming from on any issue. I'm telling you, <laughs> Doc, you can't do it. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. That's a cop out. What difference does it make? A, he's not in power now. B, he's probably not going to be. And C, it doesn't. Let me, let me oh, ask you this. No, no, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. You've read 1984 how many times? Once. You have a good memory. 
I mean, it was like college time, but I, I loved it. And um, I certainly remember the gist, the Ministry of Truth. Yeah. And Oceana. Yes. The government came in. They said, There's, we're going to tell you what words you can use. We're going to tell you what words you can't use. Yes. I, and we're going to, and if you don't do it right, we're going to unperson you. I, I, I'm all over you that. You remember all that? I know. And by okay. the way. The, the Biden administration actually tried to have this yeah. year a ministry of truth. They almost yeah. called. It was very close to I can't remember the name. It was close. It was close. And it was exactly what that is. But, I agree. But even beyond that, let me tell you this. But you think that's a bigger problem than Donald no, Trump? No, I don't. Because oh, I don't think politics, I don't think politics have, have, are the big problem. What I'm telling you is this. That's happening again, but it's not the government doing it. We're doing it to each other. This cancer culture, this cancel culture bullshit. We're doing what 1984 had Oceania, the government doing. It, yes. We're doing to each other. I understand. I couldn't that's, agree more. It's the culture me, that's the problem here. You. You're wanting to say, let's pick somebody and throw them against the wall, whether it's Biden or Trump or Bush or whoever. That okay. doesn't matter. It does. It's okay. culture. Okay.